Located on the Italian Riviera in the country's northwest Liguria region, the colorful and charming municipalities of Armaditaggia and San Remo play host to the Acerbis Grand Prix of Italy, the first stop of the 2023 Polo Duarte FIM and Giro GP World Championship. The foothills of the Ligurian Alps and the beaches that front both Mediterranean seaside resorts offer fantastic terrain for the world's best enduro riders to kick off a new season of racing, much to the delight of the many Italian enduro GP fans. The first Grand Prix of the year offers the opportunity to get caught up on the changes made to the different teams during the offseason, as is the case at Sherco Factory Racing with their new recruit, Will Rupright. Yeah, new scenery is nice. Um, welcome with, uh, you know, open arms to the team. They've been really good and open-minded in the pre-season testing, so Let's see what we can make of it. Huh? We have a new rider. With the Ruprecht. Okay, we had the preseason a little bit complicated because we had a little uh, little uh, injury with him. Okay, now he's okay. Maybe I, uh, he's not for sure 100%, but uh, he can do the race that we are already happy about this. The first Grand Prix of the year offers the opportunity to get caught up on the changes made to the different teams during the off season. The Magna Range FIM Women's Enduro World Championship is back at the Italian Grand Prix. With 17 riders from 10 nationalities entered, some new faces are discovering life in the paddock in Arma di Taggia San Remo. Uh, it's my first Enduro GP and I'm really nervous to start uh, on the sand and on the rocks, uh, but the special is really beautiful. It looks like Marine is in good hands and the LM Racing Team technician has all her suspension issues under control. Hello everybody, here we are in San Remo for the first GP of the season 2023. This is the Acerbis cross test and this will be the first test of the day. Let's go to see the track review. Immediately out of the park, Ferme riders will enter to the Acerbis cross test. A fast warm up for them, wide open in the deep sand of the Arma di Taggia beach. From the sea to the sky, after a technical uphill until the top of the mountain, rider will find the amazing Just One Enduro test. Fast trials and single track in the hard pack and stones. The last test of the lap will be the Polysport Extreme Test. It starts with a steep and difficult downhill in the bottom of the valley, where a very demanding uphill starts, with many step ups in a path full of rocks. See you on the next GP, will be Spain in La Lin. Enduro GP isn't just about action on the track. During the liaisons, the riders need to be careful and follow the rules of the road or risk running afoul of the police. In Italy, the local polizia are proud to play a role in maintaining safety at the Grand Prix and are fans of Enduro GP. Some Enduro GP riders are even members of the police force. 
Yes, he's in the sport group for the police. He's uh, many years in the, this competition uh, for me. And uh, uh, the first, uh, first race uh, in Italy, uh, very happy to start the new season. And see you on Saturday, Salah, and then. Riders blow off a little steam at the San Remo Casino before jumping into the pressure cooker of the season's first test. As is customary, the Akrapovic Super Test kicks off the Acerbis Grand Prix of Italy on Friday evening, delivering a spectacular start to the first round of the season here in Arma di Taggia San Remo. Yeah, just checking out the first super test of the season. Uh, it looks quite tight. You know, when you walk it, it looks good, and then you see bikes going around it now, and it looks a lot tighter. Designed by the San Remo Motor Club, the track twists and turns along the seafront and favors those riders hungry to hang it out in the soft sand in front of the many enduro fans, curious tourists, and locals who come to check out the fast riding action in the first test of the weekend. Great, so yeah, I'm ready to fight. Reigning Enduro Junior World Champion Zach Pichon steps up to the senior ranks in style as the CH Racing Sherco rider is fourth fastest. Back on form, defending Enduro 3 champion Brad Freeman pilots his Beta Factory 300 two stroke to third place. Super Test Specialist Matteo Cavallo is the fastest of the Enduro GP riders, finishing second, eight hundredths of a second in front of Freeman. Swedish junior Axel Semb posts a blistering time on his Husqvarna to take an early lead and end up winning the Akrapovic Super Test by one and a half seconds. Every year in the off-season, there are changes in the Enduro GP paddock. Some riders change teams, others make adjustments to their existing bikes, or like Andrea Verona and Joseph Garcia, change bikes completely, which means switching classes. Yeah, new bike for this season, 350 four-stroke, and uh, I, I test quite a lot during this winter, and uh, the feeling are, uh, are, are good. Uh, I like a lot the engine, it is quite powerful, and uh, we have a new model, so also the frame is new, and all the chassis, Everything is new, so still have to adapt a bit and still has to understand uh, how the bikes works. But uh, we are uh, on the on the way to improve. So uh, for sure, it's going to be uh, the first races of the season are going to be a, a little bit uh, on a, a training, a test, and uh, uh, we try to be at the top uh, of our form in the next uh, next few rounds. Yeah, new season, happy to, to be here again, uh, new year, uh, we start from zero again, so really motivated and as you can see I have uh, my new machine. I changed back to, to 50 this year, uh, E1 class, but you know that the main goal uh, for, for me is uh, the GP class, 
And I have also the, the new model, the 2024 KTM, uh, which is a completely new bike. So this precision was uh, uh, really good uh, because when you change a bike, you, you have like a new motivation to, to be to be fast on a new bike, to adapt uh, yourself, your style on a new bike. But to be honest, I think that uh, we make a a really good job. Yeah, we make uh, this swap to give to the riders more motivation and uh, also because uh, the riding style of Garcia fit better on the 250 and the riding style of uh, Andrea fit better on the big bike, on the 350. So uh, riders also want some, uh, some motivation, some extra, some news, new target and uh, we did it. So. I think it's a good uh, it's a good movement. The Polysport Extreme Test certainly lives up to its extreme billing, pushing the riders to their limits on the steep up and downhill sections and rocky step ups. Steve Holcomb is the king of the extreme test on day one, posting the fastest time in three of four laps. Andrea Verona manages one extreme test win in stage one. My feeling and, uh, <clears throat> one of my worst days in a long time. We are in second now, second position the overall. But fighting with Steve for the, for the first place in the class and uh, the second place in the World GP. Let's go for the last lap. Good to you. Freeman is unstoppable in stage one, taking first place by almost 25 seconds. Andrea Verona rides hard for second, just beating out new E2 rival Steve Holcomb in third. Reigning Enduro Junior champion Zach Pichon and newly fit Hamish McDonald round out the EGP top five. Defending E2 world champion Will Rupright is slightly injured, but takes to the track nonetheless on his new Sherco. Billy Bolt races his Super Enduro world championship winning 350 Husqvarna, but doesn't have the same success as at the Italian GP two years ago. Red Moto's Thomas Oldrotti just manages to crack the Enduro GP top 10 at his home Grand Prix. 
team Beta Oxmoto's French representative, Tailfield Espinas, takes third place in E1. TM Racing's Matteo Cavallo is one of only four riders to win a special in the first stage. Mikhail Persson flies his factory two-stroke Husqvarna to second place in Enduro 3. Joseph Garcia loses his rhythm after a big crash on his new 250 four-stroke KTM and can do no better than second in his first race in Enduro 1. Sherco rider Hamish McDonald is also back from injury and back on a class podium with third place in Enduro 2. On a slightly smaller 350 Beta this year, Steve Holcomb impresses in the challenging conditions, finishing four seconds shy of Verona for second in E2. Defending Enduro GP and E1 champion Andrea Verona takes his first stage win in E2 on his new 350 Gas Gas. Putting an injury-plagued 2022 season behind him, Brad Freeman returns to the top step of the Enduro GP podium for the first time since winning the title in 2021. At the end of round one of the Magna Range FIM Women's Enduro World Championship, Jane Daniels leads the standings, followed by Jessica Gardner and Maria Badia. Maria Badia takes fourth and second to finish the weekend third in the women's standings. Jessica Gardner takes second and third and sits second after her first round back to World Championship Racing. Reigning three-time world champion Jane Daniels pushes hard to win both stages at the Grand Prix of Italy. The Enduro Open World Cup features an eclectic mix of privateers, former EGP competitors, and retired pros from other disciplines. In open two-stroke, Yuri Haddock is first with Robert Friedrich second and Tim Lewis finishing up in third. Yuri Haddock leads the open two-stroke standings after the Grand Prix of Italy. After the first round of open four-stroke racing, Enzo Marshall leads the class in front of Alejandro Ceballos Escalera. Alejandro Ceballos Escalera finishes second in both stages in Italy. Enzo Marshall sits top of the open two-stroke class with first place on both days of racing on the Italian Riviera. In the open senior standings, it's a 1-2 Italian sweep with Riza and Bellotti atop the podium. Two-time reigning open senior champion, Andrea Bellotti, takes second both days at the GP of Italy. Alessandro Riza sweeps the open senior category on the first weekend of the year. Freeman, Verona, and Holcomb top the EGP podium on day one. Daniels, Gardner, and Badia top the women's enduro podium after the weekend. Haddock, Friedrich, and Lewis are top three in open two-stroke. Marshall, Ceballos Escalera, and Mistretta are the top of the open four-stroke class. Riza, Bellotti, and Muller are one, two, and three in open senior. Quite close between me and the other two girls, so I just had to keep picking away and trying to pull a few seconds here and there because I wasn't the fastest in the enduro, so I'd make up some time in the extreme and then also try to open my gap in the cross test too. And I feel like I did that, you know. I, I came, I worked hard, and uh, this is the, all the reward that we deserve because, um, you know, it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. After more than seven and a half hours of racing in stage one, the riders know the fatigue and the rougher conditions on the special tests will push their physical and mental stamina to the limit by the end of stage two. The Just One Enduro test and the Polysport Extreme test both take place in the rugged foothills not far from the Mediterranean Sea. The rocky, tight, dusty tracks present challenging conditions that separate the truly elite riders from the rest. Day two will undoubtedly be a battle between the top three from Saturday, Holcomb, Verona, and Freeman. But we'll see if Joseph Garcia gets a boost of confidence after a disappointing day one.
pushing hard. Um, ain't crashed so far, but it's been fucking closed a few times. So uh, uh, keep it on your wheels, riding good. <laughs> Yeah, feeling good on the first lap, and yeah, second lap, kind of so far so good. Uh... The feeling is strange. Uh, it's so stony. It's not my favorite terrain. <laughs> It's not my thing, but I, I enjoy trying and pushing, so it, it's fun. In the final stage of this is Service Grand Prix of Italy, Freeman, Verona, and Holcomb grab the podium places, with Garcia and McDonald rounding out the top five. Tailfield Espinas bags third in E1 for the second stage in a row on his beta. Honda Red Moto's Thomas Oldrotti improves to second in E1 on Sunday in Italy. Mikhail Persson takes second in E3 for the second day in a row in San Remo. Nathan Watson shrugs off his broken chain from stage one to take 10 points in stage two. Hamish McDonald is third in Enduro two for the second stage in a row on his Sherco. Joseph Garcia misses the EGP top three by 3.64 seconds, but is still content with his first win in Enduro one. Not long after recovering from a shoulder injury, Steve Holcomb is very happy with another second in E2 and third in Enduro GP standings after round one. On home soil, Andrea Verona goes two for two in Enduro 2 on his gas gas and finishes the Grand Prix of Italy, sitting second in the EGP Championship. Jed Etchells leads the Galfer Enduro Junior World Championship with Jeremy Sado beating out Max Allen in the fight for round one class runner up. Max Allen is quick in the sand and on the hard pack, leaving Italy third in the standings. Enduro unknown Jeremy Sado puts his motocross skills to good use to win day two and finish the stage second in the class. Fantix Jet Etchells goes one and two on the weekend to take an early lead in the Enduro Junior standings. After round one in youth Enduro, Kevin Cristino, Thibaut Giraudon, and Leo Joyon lead the standings. Third in both stages sees Leo Joyon into third in the class on his beta. In youth and Giro, Thibaut Giraudon claims second place on the class podium. Kevin Cristino rides away from his home GP first in the youth class on his 125cc Fantic. It's Freeman, Verona, and Holcomb on the EGP podium for the second stage in a row in San Remo. Etchell, Sado, and Allen get the job done again in Junior and Giro. In Youth and Giro, it's just like the day before. Cristino, Giraudon, and Joyon. In the 2023 Polo Duarte FIM and Giro GP World Championship standings, after round one at the Acerbis GP of Italy, it's Freeman, Verona, and Holcomb, one, two, and three. Yeah, this year I can say I won both days, and I'm not massively stoked about it, you know, because, yeah, I won, but it's still a lot to work on, you know, so um, for the next GP, there's some homework to be done, and uh, you best make sure I'm fucking ready for it. It's been a great start to the year on the edge of the Mediterranean Sea, with plenty of spills and thrills at the Acerbis Grand Prix of Italy. In round two of the Polo Duarte FIM and Giro GP World Championship, the paddock sets up in La Ligue, Spain. We'll see you there. <laughs>